Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thanks for joining our webinar. This is a webinar hosted by ICLE, Local Governments for Sustainability. And this is a monthly webinar for the local governments and municipal authorities constituency in preparation towards the annual climate conference of parties. And this year it will be the 28th session in Dubai. My name is Yunus Arik and I'm the Director of Global Advocacy. Uh, the World Secretariat, and I'm also uh, delivering the task of being the focal point of the Algeria constituency. Thanks for joining for today's webinar. This will be around one hour of a call. Um, this session is recorded, um, and then the recording is available both to participants and later on also uploaded in our channel, YouTube channel. Um, we usually recommend the participants to um, listen attend the presentations until the end and then we usually open the, the floor for q a or contributions from participants in the last 20 minutes or so depending on the the length of the presentation in some cases we also invite uh colleagues or partners uh inside lgma or guests um today i'm alone but i am aware my colleague ingrid also joining us uh, from cities by the Earth center who has been following the biodiversity negotiations and um, we have covered their outcomes in our last webinars and we have been practicing this as a joint presentation since uh, the last year and i would like to invite her there is one slide i, I prepared for it but uh, ingrid you can also come um once we've gone through the cop agenda if you want um with this all uh, reminders you can also uh, type in your your um, input uh, during the, the presentation into the chat box uh, or the Q&A uh, session, uh, Q&A chart. Um, my colleague Kata will help us. Kata, I think uh, all participants are available to interact during the chat box. Um, and if there is any problem, please let us know. Um, so before going further, uh, obviously, we are experiencing a unique situation. Uh, I am personally from Turkey. I'm a Turkish citizen. I live in Germany for the past um, 14 years or so. Uh, but uh, in in these days, I am day and night watching and on, on tuned to the, the information coming from uh, our, our uh, colleagues in, 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 in southeastern of Turkey and as well as uh, northeast of Syria. Uh, we, uh, like many of the people around the world, uh, we are very worried about the evolution of uh, a natural hazard, which was an unprecedented scale. Uh, and, and it was also clear there was a unique condition because of the, the impacts of the geography and the scale, as well as the fact that it was too very big earthquakes in just six hours from Sikitunda, so that's also introducing spatial hazards. Uh, but uh, the preparations, pre the prevention efforts, uh, the response to relief measures through human uh, managed or unmanaged systems are making things uh, better or worse and, and making the hazards turning into disaster. This has been the case in many countries in the world. And, in fact, what we're seeing in both Turkey and, and, and Syria, or Turkey and Syria is just another example of, um, uh, of this uh, situation. So uh, first of all, thousands of people have lost their lives. We, we sincerely extend our heartfelt condolences to all those people and the governments there. Um, hundreds of thousands are still unaccounted. Uh, therefore, we are assuming, and it's also the, the United Nations agencies also record this, one of the biggest uh, disasters in terms of human loss in Europe and probably in the world. Um, obviously, uh, in such a such a disaster that is impacting such a num number of cities, provinces, uh, and even borders, countries, uh, the role of local governments are even becoming more crucial. 
uh, this part of Turkey is very well known with uh, metropolitan industrial and, and uh, marine uh, ports and, and facilities. Um, there were several metropolitan areas who were heavily urbanized. Um, there were also human uh, urban, human settlement, rural uh, space um, in, in Syria and Turkey as well. Uh, therefore, it's, it's uh, once again, as we have seen in the case of COVID-19, the, 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 the contributions for immediate response and of course uh, the preparations and preparedness uh, the role of local government is even more, becoming more important, especially in such urban, heavily urban agglomerations. Um, and we are trying to follow what's going on in this uh, geography and and some of the, the municipalities in which uh, some of the ITLE members are also involved uh, have also compiled an infographic about uh, what we have done so far. It's, the figures are impressive. The, the amount of mobilization is impressive and it is still um, only a tiny piece. Uh, there is a, a number of, of course, national and global supports um, are, are going forward. Um, we have ITLE members uh, in, in Turkey in 18. Some of them are in the earthquake region, but most of them are not. Therefore, uh, support from the urban space outside the region is even more important. And one of those is uh, Izmir Metropolitan Municipality. It's also the chair of the Social Democrat Association of Municipalities. And he, he's also a member of the Global Legislative Committee and he molded so many networks. And they have made pleas uh, to, 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 to their partners at the local level. They have been mobilized immense um, boots and, and, and support, uh, but also they're open for uh, calls for international partners, uh, either through donations or matchmaking processes. We believe this is also very innovative, the use of digital technology. Uh, the fact that it's going directly to the impacted communities is also very important, and that it is replicable through international um, efforts is also unique. Therefore, we, we encourage those uh, networks or cities who are looking for support and to demonstrate their solidarity to support uh, the information provided here as one of the options they can consider. Um, so, um, and then and, and we are clearly seeing that we will be discussing about this. It's not just immediate relief efforts, but also the management and rebuilding of the whole area. Once again, again, the local governments will play a key role there. And we, we will try to support Azikli and all the Algerian family in this process for the cities in Turkey and Syria. Um, uh, for, 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 for those who are um, uh, familiar, uh, the LGMA is one of the nine constituencies, one engagement group who are following the negotiations of the UNF UN climate change. And we are one of the three. We have started this process in 1995 at COP1. What we basically do, uh, is a year-round engagement. We, we primarily try to influence negotiations by providing inputs and information to the negotiation agenda items. We are active on the action agenda that is particularly an important uh, agenda since Paris Agreement because of the appointment of high-level champions and high-level climate action champions and Marrakesh partnership. We work with the presidencies. This is a cyclic process. Every year, a different region of the world and a different country is um, handling this process. And we try to uh, support them. We try to listen to their priorities. We try to be inspired by their vision. And we try to also inform them what we have done and what we want to continue because there will be life after a presidency, which is only a year's uh, cycle. Uh, so that the, every president's efforts build on what has been achieved in the past. Um, and in that sense, we are particularly very, very proud and happy with almost all presidencies. We had very good relations, uh, especially COP26, COP27 has become even more important. But um, this is something that LGM is very, very proud of. Uh, and, and then we want to continue this with the COP28 presidents as well. Um, and of course, it's not the secretariat, it is not the presidency, it's also the UN parties. These are the ones who make decisions. And there are so many parties uh, who are familiar or who are very supportive of the idea of multi-level action and through partnerships, through uh, uh, agenda, we want to improve this as LGMA throughout the year. Um, so um, during the year, we have defined our calendar of webinars you can and register this. Once you register this, it's uh, held in morning and after according to European time zone, but others can join according to their suitable time zones. And once you register the user's uh, calendar invite to all the dates, and uh, it's good that you can uh, put this in your calendars because there may be some minor changes depending on some of the priorities of the year 
throughout the months. Um, we all remember we concluded COP27 with our uh, multi-level action pavilion as being the base, as being our home in the negotiations area. This was a collaboration of more than 50, 45 partners uh, hosted by Scottish government who has been championing this process uh, since COP26 in, in, in Glasgow. Um, and on, of course, uh, you are all heard probably yesterday's surprise announcement from the Scottish government that the First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has decided to step down from her role. Uh, through this opportunity, we would like to express our deepest appreciation for her leadership, not just for the pavilion of Delhi, but she has been a champion of climate action uh, and she has been championing climate emergency mode of action. She has been very actively supporting the, 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 the loss and damage as a concept in the UN space. Um, we deeply uh, uh, respect her, her leadership and we are very proud of, of the partnership we have built so far. And we look forward to the new uh, Scottish government leadership to continue her legacy. And, and uh, we sincerely hope uh, Ms. Sturgeon can also continue her passion and um, vision in the rest of her life to, to, to continue to support the climate emergency act actions of, of across the world, because this is a common agenda for all of us. Uh, but beyond uh, Scottish government, we'd like to thank the Egyptian government, the NFCC, all the local Indian governments networks who have been contributing to this pavilion, either through hosting a session or contributing to sessions. It is a huge mobilization, financially and technically, but we are proud this has really helped us to prove our, our strength and our solidarity. And, and this definitely will something be, that will, will be continuing in, in the COP28, depending, of course, on the conditions, and we will discuss this later on. Um, uh, but uh, pavilion, was not the only space we were in the UNFCC uh, negotiations, submissions, uh, Marrakesh partnership agenda events. We were in the plenaries. We had delivered our interventions. So it is a huge mobilization for two weeks. 500 plus members of local and governments across the world, either through those partners, some of them you see here, or others, or through their national governments. They were registered in person, uh, which includes also more than 150 political leaders across across. The, the spectrum of the local government around the world. Um, re let's recap uh, what our key takeaways. First of all, we consider COP26 and 7 as, as a joint building block. Uh, that is a one package, especially Glasgow was for us uh, the raise of ambition and, and, and Sharm el Sheikh addressed the emergency. And therefore, the second phase of the Paris Agreement, we were saying that time for multi level action has come. And in fact, uh, by combining emergency and ambition, we can definitely say that the second phase of the Paris Agreement literally started. Uh, and, and now the challenge is how you mobilize finance, how you mobilize capacity building, and how you mobilize governance. And that is the essence we have to be aware of. Secondly, the multi-level action delivered is the motto we used, and we are very happy. Inside the UNFCC surge and, and the urbanization ministerial, across uh, pavilions, but also initiatives of national governments would be heard from US to EU, Japan to, to, to Brazil and Colombia, so many of, of, of those processes and almost all UNFCC agendas having a reference or some sort of a linkage to the cities or urbanization is demonstrating us that the multi-level action is, 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 is the new normal and it will be um, supported by the transformative impacts of sustainable urbanization as a, as a sector, as, as a as a process, not as a constituency, but urbanization as a theme, as a sector, together with multi-level action, with the political uh, arrangements, um, is the moment that will kick us in the second phase of the Paris Agreement to the emergency mode. And finally, the logistical, technical, and political challenges have all demonstrated that the current UNFCC practices are not compatible for Paris Agreement. There are expectations, demands that this Paris Agreement, especially in the second phase, should also be reflected to the UNFCC engagement throughout the year uh, and, and at the COPs uh, and other processes, especially now that the COP, um, the, 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 the main challenge is coming from the ground and from the cities and national, the bottom up, and with the global stock take, I think that will give us the huge uh, opportunity that we need to also uh, slightly revolutionized the, the way we engage in the UNFCC process. We hope we don't go back because 
whenever you introduce any change in the analysis process, there's no guarantee that it will always be to the forwards. It can also be backwards. So let's hope that this change is is a, back, a forwards uh, change as well. Um, we have a daily briefings. You can access to all of them, and it also contains links. And then the website of the the LGMA will also be keeping all the track of all the documents and announcements. We are very proud of the third initiative and the urbanization ministerial. There are signals that uh, our colleagues from UN Habitat have been having consultations with Egyptian government and the, the presidency. We also would like to um, uh, reassure that there's a huge appetite from the LGMA constituency. We are all uh, looking forward to the upcoming announcements that will be an opportunity for us to take away what is uh, kicked off in Sharm el Sheikh. Uh, the legacy should continue. And this year we will see in the agenda there will be particular moments uh, we, we have um, uh, that we can we can make use of this. But I'm expecting some, some new announcements are coming soon uh, during the next couple of weeks as well for that, for that process. Um, uh, as we said, uh, after Sharm el we also have concluded, or we have participated in Kunming, uh, Montreal by the COP15 in, 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 as a combination of joint effort of Canada and China. We were very proud of our presence through our pavilion and the summit of cities and subnational governments. Uh, we are uh, very happy that uh, while the text is uh, outdated, but the, the global framework is adopted. Uh, we have a target 12 which says, uh, uh, it refers to urban green space. Uh, we have a full 10 year action plan. It's the second 10 year pa action plan for cities and subnational governments. These are all giving us the guidance that the second phase of this, the, the new era of the biodiversity framework will also be even stronger. And we have also seen that in this new decision, there are several new elements like the, the, the advocacy committees are rec recognized the reporting processes like cities with nature and regions with nature are recognized so that we can have direct input to the, the implementation of the Kunming Montreal biodiversity framework, global biodiversity framework. Um, Ingrid can provide input uh, later on during this call if, 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 uh, if we can have the, the appropriate opportunity. Um, on the way forward, we have said that we should focus on the operationalization of surge because it's not just a one-off event that's particularly emphasizing the multi-level action. And it also has a number of inputs to the action agenda, the champions agenda, the presidency agenda. We are aware there will be the, the second UN Habitat Assembly, the World Urban Forum. So it's also beyond the UNSCC space that surge is uh, creating resonance in so, so many spaces. Um, therefore, we need a demonstration of progress and we need to continue and we'd like to uh, hear more. Uh, I don't know whether we have colleagues from the Habitat uh, Secretary at the moment. Um, they were actively involved in a number of processes. Bernard was traveling around the world. Um, we could check with them as well. Stock take for climate emergency, we will touch upon it. The submission is also started. Uh, the, sub the submission is also a couple of differentiations there. Um, uh, but the importance is that rather than not rather, let's say, in addition to the submission, one of our biggest expectations is that we make a change at home about, ah, uh, uh, Leah is here from UN Habitat, excellent, Leah. Um, would you like to immediately come in or or would you like to wait until the end uh, if you have any updates uh, on the surge and urbanization ministerial? Uh, we could first proceed till the end. Maybe there are some things that you would also like to hear from us and then we can offer to you back the floor so that you can compliment. That's great that you are here. Um, so uh, on the stock take, yes, uh, the, the, the essence is that we have committed that or we have convinced the UNS negotiator that stock take will receive inputs from the local level and it's time to deliver this. Uh, we'd like to focus on the Earth Day and the rest of the year but this is the more moment where we can create political moment at home so that the negotiators, when they go to Dubai, they receive this pressure and input from us. So the preparations of global stock take at home is even more important than the discussions that will be held in here in, in June in Bonn or, or in, 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 in Dubai. Uh, we have one more point on that later on. We'll come back to that and, and accelerate UNSC's engagement, as we said, the first Deadline for submissions was yesterday. 
We will hear if there were any of our partners have submitted any documents yet, but there are additional opportunities coming back. And there are several agendas that received submissions throughout the year. In addition to that, there are some documents or some workshops that we have to uh, participate throughout the year. Uh, the logic is that we do not have to wait for the end of the year. The, the delivery of the Paris Agreement already takes place any moment, anytime, anywhere in the world, because that is the only way we can change course of action. Um, this slide is some of the, the agenda, not some, this is the full list of really uh, the most important agenda that we will cover throughout the year. We discussed this last week, uh, sorry, in the last webinar. Um, we would like to group them uh, and, and we are trying to track them according to the three main, uh, let's say, uh, channels. Uh, one, the things that is going on at the UN and UNFCC. Uh, this is the proced procedures defined by the UN bodies and, and we are there as observers or stakeholders. There are some processes which have been led by the, the global or national governments, which is that not the UN necessarily, and in that sense we particularly refer to G7, G20, or some of the national initiatives, uh, or, or some of the initiatives led by national and, and, and uh, the international partners. And then the third one is the action and the agenda that is uh, uh, led by the LGMA constituency, our own summits, our own gatherings uh, and in, in, in that sense there is already some overlap in some of those moments for example some of our events we would like to align with the UN agenda so that we are much more powerful we are much more strong when we deliberation in the deliberations but some of those events are outside uh, the, the UN space and we do not need UN to convene our uh, community that's that's for sure uh, it's not the mandate of UN but it is the mandate of the networks and the constituency. So these are the moments where we also define ourselves, what will be decided, what will be discussed, and what will we agree, and then uh, present the outcomes to the to the to the outer world, which is national and international community and the UN space. If I mean in the previous chart, you, you may have noticed there's around 50, 60 uh, events, and there are even some which were not listed here, for example. The UN climate negotiation secretary still did not announce the regional climate weeks, which have been a, a, an agenda for us over the past years. So there are still this this calendar will be subject to fine tuning later on. But if we look at that, uh, this is the the bird's eye view of the year. Uh, in that sense, um, the, uh, the the discussions we are seeing is that. Uh, we will be particularly peak periods in June and before June, uh, and 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 then and September and October will be very very busy for us. But we already know, for example, uh, the UN Water Conference in March, uh, or 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 we will be just working with the Japanese government. We will be supporting the Zero Carbon City International Forum. We will be immediately followed by uh, the Urban Seven Mayors uh, Summit. So that's an excellent example of how these events uh, combine to each other. The Zero Carbon City Forum is led by the Japanese government. We support the organization as ICLE and other, other city officials. It is jointly developed by US, but uh, the day after we convene the Urban Seven Marriage Summit. So these are, uh, and, and the, the, sometimes we have, we support each other as well. Um, in, in April, um, there will be, of course, the Earth Day, and that's where we would like to push our, our emphasis on the, the Earth Day and uh, the stock take. Uh, in May and June, there will be several events, and June particularly will be busy because there is an overlap between the second UN Habitat Assembly on the first week of June. Uh, immediately during already this, this one week on the 5th and 9th of June, we are expecting there will be discussion on climate, obviously, because of the surge uh, and the discussions on the the urbanization and climate ministerial, so that your habitat assembly welcomes, embraces, and 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 and, and, and hopefully asks for its continuity and, and its institutionalization into the NFC space. Um, we would um, we would uh, immediately then go uh, to Bonn. Uh, some of us will already be in Bonn because of the UN negotiations. We will you know, UN climate negotiations will also have some agendas for cities. So we will definitely split according to the. The, the priorities and capacities of our networks. Uh, but in, on the 12th and 13th of June, 
uh, their cities will be convened during the bond sessions here. It will be the perfect bridge between UN Habitat Assembly to the UNFCCC negotiations. In these two days in, in Bonn, Monday and Tuesday, we will also have some events uh, planned for the UNFCCC interaction as well. And we will discuss with the presidency and the secretariat as well as the UN Habitat colleagues as well. Um, we will then follow with uh, several events, uh, for example, the high level political forum, but Urban, Urban 20 Mayor Summit in July, which will be a major agenda for us as well as immediately also the, the G7 urbanization ministerial taking place, which is also important because Japan, uh, as the G7 president, is also very active in surge initiative, in climate agenda. Uh, so that is the opportunity that the urbanization ministerial is not happening in other fora. So we believe it's also helping us into the climate space and G20 even as well. In September, the UN General Assembly will have a number of agendas like the 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 um, this time at the heads of state level, where we will be contributing as the World Assembly of uh, Global Task Force, as well as the Climate Action Summit. And Urban October will be an opportunity for us to demonstrate our strength. The good thing, I think, is that this year, once the Urban October concludes, there will be at least one month between Urban October to the COP, so that we can even better make use of the outcome throughout the Urban October uh, as, as input to the uh, preparations of COP28 and hopefully we'll end up with the uh, multi-level action pavilion at COP28 Luzon as well. Here I would like to spend a couple of minutes for our discussion with the presidency and champion because there have been some progress there. Um, uh, we still know that it's the Egyptian government who is delivering or custodian of the decisions of COP27. They will convene meetings uh, uh, but their capacity is relatively reduced. For example, um, those delegations who have been supporting the, the process are not necessarily uh, fully on board, and that's normal. Every presidency runs this cycle, uh, and, and it's the, the upcoming, the, the country who will host the COP or who will preside the presidency introduces new teams, new colleagues, uh, and new processes to the process, uh, to the preparations, and that is an overlap, uh, as we said, in always in June uh, in Bonn. Uh, in the Emirates, in the United Arab Emirates, we heard now they have announced their logo. They have the president. At the same time, they have announced the climate action champion and for the first time ever youth climate champion, as well as a domestic coordinator. They all were announced or appointed by the, 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 the heads of state of the government in Emirates uh, in late January. This was demonstrating how, how well prepared Emirates is in this process. Obviously, uh, there are interesting uh, uniqueness um, of, of this appointment or leadership. First of all, as we said, youth champion is first time ever. Uh, climate action champion is not too far away from our community. She is the president of the IUCN, the world's uh, biggest nature conservation authority. Um, and and and. and we have also been active with IUCN on the nature agenda a number of times. Uh, Minister of Environment is uh, covering the domestic agenda and the negotiations will be held by Her His Excellency Sultan Ahmed Al Jabir. He is the Minister of Industry. He was the climate space, special climate envoy of Emirates to the UNFCC for the past 10 years or so, but he has two additional hats. Uh, he is the CEO at the same time of the National Oil Company of uh, Emirates, and he is the chair, he is the CEO of the Mazdar City, which is the flagship initiative of Emirates, which is particularly important for us, local governments, because we have been uh, following Mazdar as an example, as, as testing cutting edge technologies and processes. So the way Mazdar is, is, is evolving also is important for our low carbon transition. So. Uh, having the CEO of this uh, body or this, this process as the COP president is a unique advantage for LGM as well. However, the fact that for the first time in the history of UNFCC, there is a champ, there is a presidency who is directly connected to the oil industry is a concern that we as equally have been discussing internally. We are hearing from so many partners, so many other associations. And there is a really need for LGMA to start to discuss how we will handle it. However, it's it's good that we have already some um, communication with the presidency, uh, both 
the, the president designated himself and his team. First of all, we had a preparatory call uh, on, the, on the late January, immediately after the assignment. And um, this was an opportunity for us to ask uh, the questions about how they approach to the surge and urbanization material, whether they will continue that it is under the presidency, there will be a dedicated team or will it be the champion uh, that will be solely responsible on that, um, whether uh, they would like to have any initiative. And our expression was that we would very much happy to, to the, 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 the things that could be announced could complement and support what is announced uh, especially with surge and other processes, um, whether they would like to convene any any event, and we have addressed that compared to Sharm El Sheikh, Dubai is a much different atmosphere. Dubai is a living city. Dubai has much more history and 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 culture of urbanization and institutions established there. Uh, Dubai is member of C40. Uh, we could expect uh, the green zone, which is the area outside the UN premises. Uh, this is the area where you don't need UN accreditation or UN procedures. Uh, could be interesting, like the other COPs that we have had in Paris and Glasgow. Um, we would like to check in an early stage whether there is any process from the Dubai municipal administration, as well as the Mazdar city, because we really want to use this opportunity uh, and how we can make the combination of the stock take, um, because we know. Emirates is very strong on, on making this global stock take the political momentum as their legacy from the COP28. What we received is uh, afterwards, uh, there was a, a presentation by the champions and in that champions presentation, we heard about the presidency priorities, mitigation, adaptation, loss and damage, supply and finance. These are more or less not surprising. However, there is a, an additional more specific point, which is saying that we would like to work with the private sector and uh, we would like to discuss on inclusion, inclusivity and accountability and transparency. Uh, these are the specific topics that, that, that the presidents would also like to give visibility and opportunity. Um, you can see here that there is no reference to multi-level action yet. But uh, we are all aware that such priorities may evolve uh, during the year, depending on what they hear from the constituencies. In that sense, what we received uh, a letter, and, and this was circulated to the LGMA community yesterday. Um, this is a two page letter or three page letter, which I think is, a, first of all, a very nice, uh, and it is directly signed by the president designated himself and is directly addressed to the LGMA constituency. It's highly likely that other constituencies also receive this, but it's good that we also are, are having this discussion. The key points that, that this was addressed in this letter is that they will look for affordable accommodation, but I doubt there will be any COP which will be less costly than before. I, I think that the reality that we're expecting is that every COP will be more expensive than the previous one. They will facilitate free e-visa. I assume that will also be like a depot now. They will organize an international youth delegate program, which was, I think, kicked off with the, the Egyptian presidency, and I think they are continuing it. They would like to offer travel support to one delegate per constituency at the pre-COP and COP. By the way, we don't know pre-COP where it will help. It will be held. Um, they officially announced that there will be offer to some constituencies for blue zone pavilion space. This includes at the moment women, indigenous people, youth, and civil society help. As you have seen, it does not include uh, a space, blue zone space for LGMA. And then when we say dedicated blue zone pavilion space, it means money, which means that they either waive the fee for reservation of this space or even contribute to its decoration and technical infrastructure because it's not just the, the walls, it's the, the IT technology, the, the connectivity, the, uh, the, 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 the use of uh, the, the, the audiovisual equipment and management of these two weeks. And that's how we have worked on it. Um, this is important. Uh, I will get back to this in the next point. And then 
they are offering to create a constituency board. That's a bit uh, interesting because there's already a constituency focal point that is interacting with the champion, sorry, the, the presidency and the secretariat, but announcing a spatial board, just like you, if you go to the agenda, you can see that there's heads of delegation meetings that are happening place. Sometimes you know this, sometimes you can attend. They are offering a board of UNSC constituencies. It may be an interesting experience. It may be adding value to the process that, that our voices are much more directly influencing to the negotiation. And that's, once again, this is the priorities and proposals from the presidency, not from the champions. And we'll get to the champions in a minute. Um, however, while discussing this letter, I would like to remind you that inside the civil society and, and, and some of the stakeholders, there is a big discussion on how they relate themselves to the president, the government presidency. We know an official letter was signed by 30 plus US senators to UNSC Century and UN Secretary General to that calls for replacement of the president designate. There is an even harder or let's say harsher um, demand or a call from a group of 450 NGOs and including four UNSC constituencies on the the way the, the agenda is rolled out in Dubai, including the president designates role uh, also as uh, as uh, oil company CEO. As of today, there is no member of LGMA who joined any of those, and we have not made a statement yet. And now we have a letter from the presidency. I think the discussion we should have, not necessarily to be concluded today, but will continue in the next couple of weeks or over emails and we exchange some documents that there should be a written response to this presidential letter. I think the the issue uh, we have to discuss internally whether there is anyone who is uh, having any concern with the the multiple role of uh, of, of the president's event, especially the, the role with the chair of oil company. Uh, whether there will be any proposal or expectation that this could be changed. Uh, and we don't know whether this will be heard or, or, or followed by the president. Of course, it's just our wish and we could just at least state and then we will have to live or see what will be the response and act accordingly. But also uh, in relation to that, uh, do we ask for something more than what is listed in this five point of the presidency, for example, Shall we ask for and also a space for LGMA that is uh, financially uh, either waived or covered by financial inputs by the, the presidency? The interesting thing is that uh, every COP usually is in a space which is reconstructed or constructed from scratch because there are not too many cities or regions who, who have this uh, thousands of squares of meters of spaces but also hotels and, and logistical challenges. There are some who are advantages because they are either an exhibition fair city or they are really built for these purposes. In the case of Dubai, Dubai also has an Expo Dubai city. It's, it's really a facility uh, inside the, um, uh, the, the city of Dubai, but it's a big space. And, and at one time, at one given time, this Expo Dubai can host, I assume, around 10 COPs at a time, because the space is huge. But um, this doesn't mean that the COP should cover all the Expo Dubai area. And um, we have to uh, see, this could be an advantage why the, the presidency is offering the spaces, because it will be easier for them to delegate such spaces, as long as they are close to the blue zone negotiation. Um, I would like to hear this in the discussion, but I'm already seeing that we are receiving inputs from our partners. So that is the biggest discussion we will have. Um, for the champion, as we said from Razan, uh, Her Excellency um, uh, Razan from, from, from Emirates, uh, has already met with uh, the Marrakesh Partnership uh, partners. ICLA is one of them. We are uh, co-leads of the, the Human Settlements Thematic Working Group. We are the, the supporting the, the, the Cities Race to Resilience. We are a partner to the Cities Race to Zero, and, and, and we also support the global data platform through our collaboration with CDP ICLEI reporting platform. So we have a number of 
and three doors to the champions agenda as ICLEI, but we also know so many other LGMA members are also part of this process. Um, she has listed a couple of priorities for herself. A couple of them are very interesting. For example, uh, she wants to particularly bring nature, food, uh, which are the points that we have been calling also to be addressed in the UNFC space for years. And they had also get some attraction in Sharm el Sheikh. Uh, it is really good that the champion is also prioritizing this. Um, uh, and in terms of engagement, the champion will also support the global stock take and, and, and that, that they will also like to make the bridge between stakeholders and UN Secretary General's process and other, other elements. So it's, it's really a comprehensive vision from the champion. Uh, Ambassador uh, Excellency Razan, but as well as it's not just him, her agenda, he, she will be supported by also Dr. Mahmoud Nahiyaldin from Egypt to continue his work since Sharm el Sheikh. Um, and the, the last words on the Talanoa dialogues uh, the Talanoa, sorry, the global stock take. We uh, would like to speed up our preparations for that. Yesterday was a deadline for stakeholders to express their vision what should be the outputs of the stock day. We, has not, we have not made any submission yet, uh, but we can do it later on. On the 6th of March, we will be expected to support send inputs to the technical dialogues in June. Uh, I think what we will be submitting in the next couple of weeks is this vision that we'd like to share with you in a few days that how we will run to roll out the stock day for emergency at the local level. We suggest uh, that we will be inspired by the Talanoa process. This was a process where we discussed where are we, where do we want to go, and how do we get there? And we want to have this discussion under three main focus. One, what is the urban component of the air NDC, every national NDC? There are several NDCs which have gone better compared to the first one in terms of engagement, local engagement, but it's not enough, but we have to discuss this. We have to talk about it, and there may be some local governments who may not be even aware of it. So that it is a need for us to, to make them informed that there is a legal national plan that will help their climate ambition. Secondly, what is our commitment towards 2030 and 2050? Did we share with communities of our cities or regions? Are they involved in the implementation? Are we on track? What are our challenges? We have to address this as well. And finally, how do we address climate justice in our cities, in our regions, but also internationally, the global loss and damage discussion. If we can make this discussion in a, in a city hall, half a day or one day, or a municipal parliament or a regional parliament throughout the year, at least once, I think that will be the exact model of how we bring the global stock take to the local level and then the result back to the UNFCC process. Um, in that sense, the global stock take is also very important because that's also giving us the notion to deliver the multi-level notion of climate action, not just at the COPs, but in the implementation throughout the year. In that sense, we would encourage that these meetings are designed mainly by the, the administrations. Uh, it is supported by networks, either it's, it's design or it's, 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 it's uh, contribution. Uh, conduct, conducting the sessions, we encourage to connect to partners, especially youth, because the stock take is a very important opportunity, especially during the spread for future and this climate emergency era, which was very, very active in 2019. There's a certain decrease of momentum. So we believe this is an opportunity to go elevate this momentum, reignite this momentum, and, and bring concrete results, which is also part of the Glasgow Climate Pact and the spirit of multi-level action of the, the Paris Agreement. And we should also connect to other constituencies like parliamentarians. We have to bring the, the, the scientific community, especially building on our achievements with the, the, the summary of policymakers of the AR6. So this is what we will, we have developed a template and I, see, I assume we will be sharing with you next week, at least to share with you. And we would like to open this to the LGMA family as a kind of an expression of interest and those cities and regions who commit to conduct this discussion with this format, we would like to recognize them that it is 
for example, um, Cairo stock take for climate emergency, or uh, New Orleans stock take for climate emergency, or um, Izmir stock take for climate emergency, whatever, that, that these inputs are then fed by IFE and Algeria across the city to the UNFCC process in Bonn and in, at Dubai, and hopefully beyond with the national governments in there and this and others. So that is the, the discussion we would like to submit in the next few weeks, both uh, at the, the outcome document phase, but also how this product can feed into the technical dialogue in June session. I would like to conclude with my uh, speech. I'm sorry that it, it's too long for, a, for taking attention, but I see several of our colleagues have already started to type in. As I promised, while I now turn off my microphone, I would like to first invite uh, Leah to provide us additional updates from the, 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 the preparations or outcomes from or follow up from search. Then Ingrid, if, if she wants to, or I see Kobe, there are several questions. I will also address this. Uh, so let's start with Leah. Kata, can you? Leah, we don't see you. You can turn on your camera and turn on your mic. Hi, Yunus. Hi, everybody. Apologies. Yeah. It took a moment to promote me from participant to host. Uh, good to see all of you. Happy to give a, a brief update on what has happened on Surge. I mean, uh, Yunus, you already gave a, a, a fantastic overview of where we stand. Um, maybe just to say that after COP, um, with a little bit of reflection, we, we thought about, I mean, you, you showcase these five entry points, these five working groups, which are strong entry points in buildings and housing, urban energy, urban water, and uh, waste consumption and transport. But we thought in addition to that, as a, a additional complementary thing, what we also need to work on is just building the foundation of surge. What does that mean? That really means highlighting the opportunities to address sustainable urbanization and multi-level climate governance. That means bringing, I mean, bringing more and more cities to the COPs, of course, in collaboration with the LGMA, mandating such a ministerial meeting, working towards having another ministerial meeting at COP28, but uh, also aligning um, all of our calls for inclusion of cities more strongly in the COP outcomes. Is that something we can also enforce and build on existing efforts with the SEARCH initiative? and then enhancing the recognition of local actors in national governments. So working with some supportive national governments towards uh, having stronger urban content in their NDCs, um, working with them uh, to implement something like a cities and climate change officer in their respective national governments to allow cities to have a focal point, focal points, dedicated focal points for climate action in, in governments. And and then also building um, around stronger communication and partnerships. We've had such a strong sign up for search. Over 170 um, organizations have endorsed this so far. Um, so that the, the numbers here are outdated, which is of course good news in this case. Um, and uh, how can we build up a partnership portal to allow um, partners to come together. We have great international partners, but also national level NGOs and implementing partners who could really support in building a strong partnership um, around search, um, exchange knowledge, come together for project proposals, implement a work on the ground, and also, of course, have a website that can provide regular updates for search um, as a whole. So that's just a couple of new things and thinking around entry points for surge, um, which has um, resonated really well with some of the partners that we've spoken with. Um, it's more an additional thinking to what we already have. And um, 
the next steps are for us seeing how we can resource uh, some 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 money for this um thinking at a different a couple of different levels thinking around how can we package some of these entry points into into fundable working packages but then also how we can um maybe think about piloting some of these things in in one or two cities and countries first also to attract funding and showcasing that this is really worthwhile and to have a more large scale funding for. Um, Yunus, you've mentioned some of these milestones uh, coming up on uh, in 2023. So of course, there will be a strong link with the UN Habitat Assembly. Um, this will be a fantastic opportunity to bring all the partners together, but also speak with interested uh, governments in, in, in making them uh, join Surge, hopefully with um, also some financial contributions. But also um, the SBs in Bonn, the UN Water Conference, uh, we are uh, working towards having a side event on water, where we also will present and position surge. Um, and then, uh, of course, the road towards COP28 um, coming up um, quickly as well. Our ED is also meeting with um, the UAE um, with the COP28 presidency with the high level champion. So also bringing some of these messages that you've just mentioned also there and seeing that we can um, continue building on surge uh, towards COP28. I'll stop here. Thank you, Leah, and, and congratulations once again. Uh, it is uh, now taking place. That's good to see you, the action going around. Uh, and I think there will be more moments for us to, to, to share more updates and, 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 and that to make sure that surge is alive. And once again, we also have said that uh, surge is one of the few action initiative that was launched at COP27 but, but officially included in the action agenda of the champion so that's also something that we'll follow up and let's see how, how we will be bringing this momentum towards COP28 and onwards. Uh, Ingrid uh, you are also joining us thanks a lot. Um, uh, how do you see the, the next step after the the, the biodiversity summit, I think they are, you're still in the digestion phase as the UN community and the secretary, but uh, eager to hear your updates. Uh, you're muted, yeah. Sorry, thank you so much. Um, yeah, definitely, I think the, the biodiversity uh, community and the party specifically are in a reflective planning stage. Uh, I know, for example, that several of them are, are organizing um, stakeholder report back sessions, for example, last week I was invited by the National Minister of Environment here in South Africa to one such session. Um, there were over 400 stakeholders from all of the major groups, um, business, um, NGOs, also very importantly from all levels of government in this country. Um, and specifically, um, she asked me to give uh, reflections and report back on the outcomes um, of the COP for uh, cities and subnational governments. Um, and this week I uh, had a similar invitation from um, the Committee of Regions ENBE Commission, uh, where they were in their meeting, I think it was actually on Valentine's Day on the 14th, uh, had a, a series of, of uh, report backs also um, from the two members of the Committee of Regions that had attended the summit um, and the pavilion and in fact had uh, participated and given um, messages and interventions there. And um, I was asked for a similar report back again, also on reflecting on uh, what are the sort of major implications for, for um, our major group and our constituency. Um, I think the, the other thing that is happening is that in, in the countries, a lot of them are reviewing and revisiting their uh, NBSAPs, the National Biodiversity Strategies and Action Plans, with a view to alignment with the new targets and starting consultative processes around this. It's still early days. Many of them are still looking into budgets and things. Um, we've had uh, initial discussions already starting at COP with uh, the Scottish government around taking um, the process forward now as we move into implementation mode. Um, 
and those those discussions are ongoing and we will um, as soon as the uh, um, authorities have got their sort of own houses in order we will proceed with that um, within ICLI we're also in in discussion with the CBD secretariat and some of our other partners uh, including uh, um, uh, regions for the advisory committees under the the decision the that you mentioned in, in your quick presentation. Um, and we are working very hard on promoting the action platform on cities of nature, regions of nature. We've had a series of internal brainstorms in preparation for one coming, I think it's next week, where we are going to be um, meeting with all of our cities of nature, regions of nature partners uh, to talk about the way forward. Um, and then just to say very quickly, and I'm going to post it in the chat box, um, some, of, some of the COP decisions have been uploaded onto the website, there is the link, uh, but the decision, the dedicated decision and plan of action on uh, subnational governments, cities and other local authorities still has not been uh, finalized and allocated its number, so that's still there only as an L document. Um, and then, I, if you would not mind, I would just like to talk very quickly about another convention. Um, it's the Ramsar Convention, but it's a very important convention as it has a program that is dedicated to uh, cities, um, which is called the uh, City um, uh, Wetland Accreditation Scheme. Um, I don't know if the um, stake, if, if our um, LGMA friends know that uh, ICLI through the Cities Biodiversity Center is the co-chair of the uh, Independent Advisory uh, uh, Committee. And they are planning a big meeting coming up now um, following their COP14, which was held uh, in Geneva and Wuhan last year. Uh, there's a meeting of the mayoral network of the of the wetland accreditation scheme, which will be taking place in June in Amiens, France. And this network consists of all of the mayors whose cities have um, um, accredited wetlands. So they they're part of this scheme, um, and that meeting will be taking place. I think it's the first week of, of June, the 8th or 10th, or starting about the 7th. So that's an important uh, meeting. And um, just to say that I think the, the initiatives taken by cities within this uh, um, convention is really important. And we're looking towards um, working very closely with the Ramsar uh, Secretariat um, around how we can optimize uh, profiling and showcasing of those cities and their scheme on the Cities with Nature uh, um, uh, platform. I think I'm gonna leave it at that and thanks very thanks. much. Thanks Ingrid, and I think the biggest uh, importance for COP28 will also be the fact that IUCN president is also the champion and, and she has specifically addressed that food and nature will be a priority, I think. We would like to bring this in our experience from the biodiversity process and outcomes to the climate change through this channel as well. I think that will also be uh, the helpful. I see Teresa from Committee of the Regions who wants to take the floor. Please, Teresa, go ahead. Thank you, Yunus, and uh, thanks, uh, Leah and Ingrid, for the for the updates. And indeed, our meeting took place on the 14th of February. We're very romantic people. Um, so I have two, two points uh, for information and, and two questions. The first is that uh, we have uh, started our legislative work. As you know, we prepare, we are a consultative body of the EU institutions and every year, every Teresa, did you lose you? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you now. Okay. So yes, we are starting our legislative process um, that our political priorities that will go to the European Commission, to the European Parliament and to the Council. And we have appointed, appointed our rapporteur who is going to be the mayor of Warsaw, Mr. Rafal Czaskowski. Um, so this year, again, we will have a, a high level profile uh, which will help us to, to bring our messages to, to the institutions. Um, on this, as last year, we will organize a stakeholder consultation, I think, around uh, April, May, and you will, of course, be invited to it. So that's the first point. Uh, second point is that uh, we, uh, together with Regions 4, are working on updating our submission to the GST that we did last year. 
uh, we are planning to circulate to, to share with you uh, next week on Monday. Uh, we will give you all in this call and in the mailing list a week to contribute to the document that we will uh, share. We will share a link online so we can all work on it together at the same time. And then we are planning on, on updating, up, uploading to the website by the 6th of March. I think it's the deadline. Um, so what there we're looking the, for, anyway. it's on adaptation. And it should focus on the technical dialogue session in June. Indeed. So, good. Um, we have the guiding questions, so we are replying to those questions. And what we need good. is updated data. And also, we would like to, to have a few uh, paragraphs on the link between adaptation and uh, nature and biodiversity. So building on, on what was decided in Montreal, so colleagues uh, who went to Montreal can please uh, work on that. Um, then uh, we have, I have two questions. Uh, so the first one is, do we know uh, the timeline for the workshops that are going to take place in 2023? We know that there will be four workshops on the GGA framework. Do you have information on that? And the second question is uh, for Bonn. So as soon as uh, colleagues know if they're going, uh, we can share the information. We can see who will join uh, which uh, workshop and if we could work on a joint position uh, on every of the topics. So for instance, as uh, COR and Regions 4, we are uh, working on adaptation. So we would like to share the points that we would raise in the workshop with everyone so everyone can contribute to it. Everyone will know what we're going to say and the same applies to finance, uh, loss and damage, et cetera. So maybe, I don't know if two weeks before going to Bonn, we could have one page uh, with the main points that we would like to, to raise during, during the week in, in Bonn. Definitely, I, I think, uh, so there are several workshops, agendas are circulated. I will convey this to the LGMA. One of them is adaptation workshop. I think one of the biggest discussions was the, the way the transitional committee of the loss and damage was set up because the deadline for parties to nominate uh, their representatives, you remember this 24 seat body was um, passed and, and there was no appointment. Now they are fulfilled. So the transitional committee is now ready to take off. But in the transitional committee, we don't have any role yet uh, as observers. So, but there are other processes taking place. So there will be a calendar circulated shortly. Um, and I fully agree with your suggestion uh, for, for uh, gathering our, our input before the SBs kick off. And as we said, we want to channel most of our events on the 12th and 13th of June so that we do not overlap with the UN Habitat Assembly. We have to see how UNFCC will be agreeing with us. Um, and, um, and I think there's also a linkage because then there's this European colleagues who are committing Brussels Urban Forum on the 13th, 15th of June. So that's also another agenda that, that we have to think about. Uh, as I said, uh, it's now starting to take more clarity on, on the way forward. On the inputs and the chat box, I now see that they're getting to an end, but I don't want to ignore what's put on the chat box. There was a, a discussion. Ah, ah, Asif is here. Asif is the colleague from the Emirates uh, presidency team who is uh, responsible for the city's engagement as well. That was uh, the, 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 the colleague we had to have the first meeting. Asif also shared, Asif shared the link. I also shared the link. COP28.com is the presidency homepage. Uh, Carl from um, uh, CLGF and, and on, in, our, in his own capacity also recommended that we send a letter to, as LGMA to Nicola Sturgeon. I think that's a very nice idea. And she is, uh, he, so he's recommending to invite her to our future events as an honorary chair. I think that is a very nice idea. Um, uh, and Kobe is suggesting that the LGMA should also ask for a dedicated pavilion. Uh, I think that's what we would um, check with all of you uh, to see uh, how the tendency so that then we respond to the UNFC, to the presidency letter. Thanks, Kobe, for, for uh, at least sharing your first insights. Um, I think we are done for today's call. Uh, are there any points remaining? If not, uh, we could announce that this session is over. Uh, be aware we will repeat the same slides uh, with other part participants on at 4 p.m. Uh, European time today. And 
and until that time, take care and, and wish you the best.